Okay, Ray, you're out here living in a tent in Sacramento. Tell me what it's like, what's going on, how you survive. What it's like is it's very hard. It's certainly not uh, the accommodations of an apartment or a house to live in. We have to struggle each day. Uh, we have to go miles just to get our water. We have to go miles to gather up food. Fortunately, the Christian organizations and those in fishes here in Sacramento uh, give out food and so we're able to survive on that part. Um, as far as getting out of the situation, it's almost impossible uh, because there's not enough money and um, most of us have um, either medical disabilities that are pending with Social Security or we have Social Security and it's just not enough money to get into an apartment because the apartments cost so much money. Um, a lot of the requirements are that a person has a first, last, and a deposit, that they have three times the amount of income per the rent. If a person only has $900 a month coming in for Social Security, the rent happens to be six or 600 or 670, 650 or $700 a month. Three times that's 2100 Then we don't have the credit. We can't get in. Certainly we can't come up with first, last, and deposit. Um, even if it was just simply first and last at $600 a month, that's 1200 We only get nine. We're stuck. And how can we save up our money to get up to 12 And even if we do, there's not going to be any guarantee that we'll be able to get a place because still we'll run into that. Uh, they want three times the amount of the income and our, and our credit card and our references that are recent. And so it's a real troubling situation. Uh, there's not enough subsidized housing in the county to help us out. And um, so, and if we do, uh, if we're on Social Security and you apply for subsidized housing, they're going to they require that you be having a case manager and a supervisor and they control all of your funds and pretty much you're just living the way they tell you that you're supposed to live. And um, it, uh, it's a very hard road on that one too. And that takes time to get into that kind of a program. So there's no real situation where if there was such something like for people that were disabled or in a situation to where they were getting a Section 8 situation where the government was covering for them and it was based on the amount of income they had at the time, then something could be worked out. I think that people could get out of the situation and they could survive. Other than that, without that kind of a latitude, we're not going to be able to make it out of here. It's just going to be a constant recycling and a turnover of the same situation. We had 1,500 people living out here in a tent city here. Oprah came out here and thought, well, you know, maybe she could help out. Apparently, even with Oprah Winfrey's power and billions of dollars and contacts, even with uh, Barack Obama and Hollywood and so forth, she, in her, in her power, can't even influence the, the decisions that are going on around here. She can't help us out. And um, I understand that millions of dollars were donated by people around the world after Oprah through Loaves and Fishes, and uh, for some reason, Loaves and Fishes says they're not, you know, they don't claim how much money they got. And in the beginning, it was like, well, they're getting millions of dollars a day. And then they had to stop taking donations because they got so much. We don't see any assistance from them as far as housing, um, which is what they were pledging to do. And basically, they were helping with this tent city uh, or getting an organ a situation where there was some land where people could live in tents. And I've seen that in other situations, other counties, uh, Santa Cruz City in Santa Cruz County, they have a little tent city. And there's a very well organized and there's no crimes and there's no drugs and there's no problems. And if a person does have a problem, there are managers available to them uh, that work for the county and they can go to them and talk to them and ask them for help. No police, no interaction like that, no shakedowns, no fear. And it's a nice quiet place to be. And they also have uh, a truck that comes around. Um, I think it's like um, Food Not Bombs organizations. They come in the morning and it comes at night and feeds the people. And uh, that works out. And that's one of the nicest situations that I've seen. I don't see that here in Sacramento in that particular way. But um, that works out. And so I don't know if it's because Santa Cruz people are more peaceful or, you know, they're just more laid back but or more nonviolent. Here there's really not the, not the violence. It's just that people are struggling, trying to make an income. And um, any drug trafficking or something is just their way, their only way of making money. And so that's what they do. And... Um, it's not like everybody has a lot of money and then they're gathering up money and spending it on drugs when they could be spending it on something else. It costs a lot of money to live out here. Um, there's no major stores, so within the you know local area, within five, six miles. And so um, people have to buy the stuff at the little stores, and so we don't have access to refrigeration. So we can't buy lots of good food. We can't buy meat or something or food that we can store. And uh, a lot of the places don't have such things as those, you know, those good groceries. And so we have to buy the little stuff, live day to day. And a person can go to the store, and if they have cigarettes on their mind, um, cigarettes are $6, a Bic lighter is another couple, that's 8 bucks. 
I buy a couple of things in a candy bar and for the night. By the time you walk out of there, you got a small bag and it's $30. And if you do that a couple of three times a day or a week, um, there goes your money there. Yeah. And if something comes up, you're really in a strife. <clears throat> How long have you been out here? I've only been out here, fortunately, this time for a month and a half. For a month and a half. Yeah. So I was living in a transitional uh, center, a transitional living house, and I was paying my rent. And um, they decided, the owner decided to go ahead and make a contract with the state of California for their, um, the amount, they had over too many people, right. overpopulated. And so they were, had a lot of convicts that couldn't get out because they were high control, they had no place to send them, and they were developing contracts with people that had transitional homes and they had a good record um, to um, have a contract with the state to where the state would bring the people there and then they would, you know, let them off and then if people would have a place to live and the state would pay. Well, in a situation where people are on Social Security, they're not going to go live in any place where there's, you know, less than more than two people in a room right. because there's too much conflict there. Now, with convicts, they're used to being with hundreds of people in one big giant dorm. Right. And so, um, basically, in my situation, the guy, we fixed up the garage and he put um, eight bunk beds in there. And so that's two bunk beds a person. Right. There's 16 convicts, high control in there, and they're all off the hook. And so for myself, you know, I was just had to go because they were running around. They didn't have any money, and they would be like, get together, and they go, okay, well, that guy just got his $200 check from his Bay or something. Um, let's go get his money. And people on Social Security are like, oh, so friendly because, oh, they're on Prozac. So they think everything's all cool. It's not looking for danger. And so they, oh, I can give you, I can loan you 20, and then another guy can he loan 20, and another guy 20. And next thing you know, the convict, or I mean, the convict's got all the money, and the poor guy on Social Security got nothing but cigarettes from them. You know, What's so. your future like? My future is I have to find another place to live. And um, so I... Um, is there making you move from this area? Well, or? well, they, they, they shook everybody out of here already with the police. Fortunately, the people that own this concrete company here and next door to us, this is their land. Right. And on the other side of it, they're building a doggy park for Sacramento citizens and at the Sutter's um, Fort um, Park. And so what they're doing is um, they said that we can stay here because they have nothing to do. They're not going to do anything with this area. And so this is their private land. So they gave us permission to be here. And then there are people that are further down by the railroad tracks that are, there's a big encampment down there. And they're staying there too because it's still the private land. They're further enough away from the railroad tracks not to be on the Pacific Railroad or Southern Pacific Railroad's uh, land. And so the fact that we're 100 yards away from the levee and the fact that those people down there are at least 100 yards away from the tracks puts us in that private land area to where we can't be in trouble. So, and so, so you're safe here. They're not going to come here for and now, From what we were told. We were told before, though, by the lawyers at Loaves and Fishes and the police that we had to go, too. Right. But everybody else got eviction notices or trespassing notices and three days to get, and uh, we didn't get them. And so we were still told to go, but we packed up all our stuff, right. and most of the people went and found out we didn't have to go after all. Got 30 seconds, one minute. 30 seconds. What, what would you like to say? I'd like to say it's very difficult, and if you can do it at all, um, avoid this whole situation. I don't know how the economy is going to get worse. There's going to be a lot more homeless people. I feel for the people that uh, were working hard and doing the right things and lost their houses because of the mortgage situation. I don't know where their fallout's going to come from or how they're going to survive, what they're doing, but it's a difficult road. Um, just keep your eyes out and, and try to protect yourself as best you can. Avoid this at all costs. Don't rob anybody. Bye. Thank you very much for talking to me. All right, you're welcome.